this is Everyday Taipei, and today we are going to Beito. So just to show you where it is in relation to everything, this is Taipei 101 here. Sheila Night Market is here, and Taipei Main Station is here. Beito is way out there on the red line. You can get off at the Shin Beito exit. A little bit more on that later. Uh, we're going to walk up on the side of this park here, and we're going to end at this pond, this lake called Thermal Valley. So, like I said before, there's a little bit of an asterisk on how to get here. Um, the last leg of it, you're going to have to transfer. So what you're going to do is you're going to get on the red line and you're going to get off at this station here. It's called the Beito exit. <laughs> that might make things a little bit more complicated. But basically, you're going to go down these stairs and you're going to look for another sign that says Shin Beito. So, as you can see here, there's a red sign, there's a pink sign. You know, you're going to see these types of pink signs all over this place. And you're going to want to follow those. What I had to do was go down these stairs and then go back up to the other platform you see here. It's pretty well marked out. I don't think you can miss it. Um, I, it is adding a little bit of complexity to your trip. And that's why I put it in here because it is a little bit of a hassle so you have to get off that station get onto onto this platform and then ride it for one stop and get off it's about five minutes from here and it's a really slow really easy little ride so it's not that big of a deal but i would think that if it's your first time here you can kind of get stressed out about it but like i said before the the signs are really well laid out it, it's really it's not that big of a deal as long as you just calm down and, and know what you're looking for but this is what the platform looks like it has that little guy there that little display that you can take a picture of if you wanted to and this is after that five minute ride you're going to get out and exit here at the Shinbeito exit so it's kind of like my Shui video where it's the last stop so it's almost impossible to get off it at the wrong exit so um, you just want to follow everybody else who's getting out of there because most likely they're gonna be tourists especially if it's this particular area because uh, that's all it is is a bunch of hot springs Coming down here, you're going to go to this intersection. It really doesn't matter which way you go. You basically just want to get to that park on the other side of the street diagonally across from us. And even if you don't, you can take this street up to the left. This street runs parallel to the park that we are going up. I just wanted to take you through the park because it's beautiful um, and a nicer view. One thing I do want to note is whenever I come here, I try to get the food down here. The more you walk up, there's less options. So here, there's like a Starbucks, there's a KFC here. If you don't know about Taiwan KFC, you should definitely do some research. I, I like it a lot. It's a little bit on the oily side, but they have really good stuff. They have like milk tea and they have like a uh, little uh, custard pies danta and it's actually pretty good i really like it I'm, i went to macau once and like i went to this place that's known for their um their danta and i it was better than kfc but not to the point where i needed to buy a plane ticket and go there anyway other than that <laughs> i'm a little bit sidetracked but other than that here is where you'll find most of the yeah all the food stuff so like starbucks or the fast food restaurants or basically pick up all your food here if you wanted to do that like eat here and then walk up into up to thermal valley the further you get up it's usually more hot spring hotels and things you'll see it there'll be a couple of little snack areas and and restaurants and things but the the picking the picks get a little bit slim the picking gets a little bit slim of the further you go up but like i said before this area this park is really beautiful i didn't show it enough but there's like this river that also runs through it 
because obviously uh, this is where all the hot springs are, there's got to be some water, right? This little guy here is pretty interesting, this building. It's a uh, Aboriginal uh, history museum. Something that not a lot of people understand about Taipei is that there is this race of Aboriginal people that were here even before the Chinese that are here. So it's pretty complicated and I'm probably going to screw it up. but. First, there was the Aboriginal people, and then around 500, 600 years ago, there was the Fukanese people, and then after that, there was the KMT people from mainland China who were coming uh, after World War II, and so that was another big migration. So there's kind of like three different sects, like the Aboriginals um, definitely have... Uh, Defined uh, features that set them apart from everything, and then there's also the Fukunese people that also look a, bit, a little bit different, and then there's like the the KMT uh, that that generation and that those people that came from mainland China uh, also have a different look. But yeah, going up this area, there's this beautiful library here, and it's supposed to be a green library. It's one of the first green libraries, or green library. Um, that's been built in Taiwan actually <laughs> so it's really nice you can go in there I chose to go on this side you can cross it and go into it no problem you don't really need to even you don't need a library card or anything or you can what I did is get something from 7-eleven and kind of just chill on these steps here and take a look at this stream here and and look at this library because it's beautiful right um, the other option would be take all your li your your seven, your drinks or whatever, go out, cross that river, go into that library, and there's a bunch of outdoor seatings on those decks there. Which is Okay, so after the library, you're going to be coming up on this building here, and this is actually the Beito Hot Spring Museum. And so it's a very cool place. It started off as a bathhouse in 1913. So back when Japan took over Taiwan, they made a point of developing certain parts of the country. So like the Capitol building is uh, was constructed during the during that era and a couple of other things including this bathhouse and so it was completed in 1913 and it was the largest bathhouse at the area in the area um, because of course the Japanese are renowned for loving their hot springs and so it was like I said finished in 1913 and it um, was very successful for a time but it 
transferred to a lot of different things uh, after the Japanese left. In my research, it looks like it was a bathhouse and then a police station and then a KMT headquarter and then a reception house for dignitaries and then it was abandoned for a time. Back in 1995, it was classified as a class three historical site and then uh, restoration of the building was completed in 1998. This is the exit here. So when I went, it was free. You just have to wait in this line you take off your shoes and then you can go in and walk around the different exhibits. This this floor here, which I don't know how you would consider, maybe it's considered the first floor, um, has different exhibits in it and there was some performing arts it's, uh, exhibit happening when we were there. But it's, it's done in like a Victorian and Japanese style and so there was a Mm, was it a, like a tatami room area that had people playing traditional instruments um, and that's all the first floor and, and it has a couple of different things that probably change up on the bottom floor uh, you would go and you would see the actual bathhouse so they restored that so you can see what it was like and it also have like history of the bathhouse and those types of things so it's really interesting. It's really a, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful bathhouse and it's free, so I wouldn't see. I, I highly recommend it. It's pretty cool, and it's got a nice view out into looking over the library and all the other things. So you can't go wrong with it as long as there probably as long as there isn't a big line. I mean, I for one don't like lines too too much, so I try to avoid them. But I think it goes by pretty fast to be honest. You kind of go in there, you take off your shoes, and then you're admitted in. Coming up here is a public hot spring. Uh, there is a fee, I believe, to go in there. I've never been in, but um, as you can see, if you're if you're walking up, you can kind of peek in there and see. It looks like there's just a bunch of old people, but uh, it seems really interesting. Uh, this here is the um, Beto Plum Garden Museum. Um, it was finished in 1913, but it opened to the public in 2010 and renovated in 2015. It's just another museum. When we went there, it was free as well, which is good. But when we went inside, it was an uh, exhibit for like a very popular Taiwanese pop star in like the 60s or 70s who was... Um, kind of popular in Japan and Taiwan at the same time too so she was a pretty big deal um, it was really interesting and free so it's like you just kind of show up maybe all you need to do is buy your 7-eleven snacks and that's it and you can just go to the like the um, the two museums there and call it a day I, that's that's what I did I mean one of these days, if I ever get enough money, I'd like to actually stay in one of the uh, resorts here, the bathhouse resorts, because I I love going to hot like uh, hot spring resorts and stuff. It's awesome, but it is on the pricier side. I mean, this place is not just for Taiwanese people. Like, you'll see a lot of Japanese people would definitely. Uh, come here and some of the hotels are inspired uh, or not inspired they cater to that like uh, Japanese demographic coming up here it seems like all of my videos have like a lot of construction which I don't know if I haven't noticed that before or maybe because of the pandemic they're they're deciding to do a lot of work but almost all of my videos have some kind of construction going on and it looks like Beito Park or uh, Beito is not an exception 
Um, and it seems like there's repairs happening here too. Which hopefully will be done when you come to visit here. The uh, little shot of the of the river there. It's it's really really beautiful. There's no almost no wrong angle in this park of that river. You could almost stop anywhere and then just look or, or hang out and you'll and you'll feel and, and you'll and you'll think it's beautiful. So this is the end of the park and we're going up into Thermal Valley, which is one of the springs that feeds these hot spring uh, resorts and things. And so this is the entrance. It's got kind of, it, it's it's kind of a little bit unobtrusive. You'll know because everybody will be walking this way. But there's no real marker like, hey, this is the Thermal Valley, go this way type of thing. Convenience store highlight. That's specific to Taiwan. Um, but yeah, you can pick up some stuff. Like I said, there is some snacks here. You can kind of go up here. A another thing, because it's it's very sulfury, it, it does smell here a little bit. Um, one of the things that they like to sell here are eggs that are like cooked in that sulfur. Um, so you'll see a lot of that here. Um, and just like some other like Taiwanese type of fare. Yeah, uh, so the, that little area is a little place where you can pick up a couple snacks, and then here is where I guess is the entrance. You would say this this sign here to the right, to uh, Thermal Valley. And so it gets really nice. I mean, they done they they did it up real nice. I I I really like this. I mean, this whole area is pretty beautiful. I I love this area. Especially when you're here, I don't know if you can get it from the mic, but there's a bunch of like, you know, stream, you'll just be hearing the stream in the background constantly, and it's usually nice weather. But it's really unobtrusive, right? Like, you're kind of walking up, you don't really know what's going to happen, like, you can't even see it from here. You see, like, this gift shop type of area. You just kind of walk up. And then it slowly kind of presents itself and you're like, whoa, this is this is intense. Mm. You get some of that steam over there. Yeah, it's so here we are, you get kind of a little bit of the stream and then bow, it's like all that steam rising off of it, it is hot. So I, I, I looked it up, I think they said the, the, the temperature of this lake here is like 50 to 70 degrees um, Celsius, which is like what half to boiling, uh, water gets to boiling. So like, what is crazy is like these, this mist that's coming off of it, and when it hits you, it is warm. Like, when I was doing this, I, I was like, it shouldn't, is my, is my camera okay? Like, I don't know, it's just this very humid, like, hot mist coming off of this thing. And it's epic, right? Look at it, it's, it's cool. So other than the lake, there's not really a whole lot. There's this like little shrine to the left. It's not a part of the lake. It, I think it was just there before they did construction of it. To be honest, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, it's really just a scenic walk. It is not a through pathway. So it, it does terminate here. Um, and so you'd have to go back. But what's kind of cool at the end of this, there's like this waterfall too in these vines here I don't I don't really know if the camera picked it up but there's like this waterfall here last time I was here these vines weren't here but you can kind of see it you can see the the water hitting the rocks there 
And so, yeah, this is kind of the end in epic view right there. Look at that. But, yeah, that's Beto. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button, and I hope you have a good day. See ya.